Hey y'all, welcome back. I'm Shayna Searcy. I'm so excited to paint with you today. So we're going to be revisiting the kind of naive folk art style, um, whimsical watercolor painting. So this scene is not going to be um, subtle. It will have very bright and vibrant colors in it. I'm feeling bright and vibrant and I want to express that on the page. It's going to be kind of an ocean scene. There's going to be water here, lots of hills, some trees, and a lighthouse that we're going to incorporate with a sky. No big moon or sun in this one. I'm just going to let the sky be the sky. All right, so we're going to get started. I'm using, I'm painting in my Etcher Lab 100% uh, cotton uh, watercolor sketchbook. I have a size eight Princeton Aqua Elite brush. I also has a, have a size 12, which I'm going to pull out right now. And there we go. Um, I am using my Core Paint Palette, Q-O-R by Golden. All right, I am going to pull out some of my Phthalo Blue. We're going to start in the sky. A little bit more phthalo. And I'm going to start from the top down and we will give this a little bit of a gradient. But like I said, this is going to be a nice, bright and vibrant image. So I'm going to hold this on a slight angle just so I can get a nice wash. I'm going to try to keep the edge of this wet. Sorry, I didn't make enough paint to get started. Go around my roof here. And around the railing, I'm not gonna worry about but the hills. I'm gonna go down to my hills. And we're gonna do this side. So I'm just trying to keep an even wash, but like a bead of water and paint on the very bottom, like the end of my line where I go. It gets a little bit harder in these nooks and crannies to keep everything kind of even without doing any puddling. And again, I can go over the railing. The railing's gonna be black, so that doesn't make a difference. Get right in under the roof there because you're going to see all the sky through the railing. And I think we're good and have a nice, even dampness. Okay, we're going to let the sky dry. It's going to lighten up a little bit as it dries, but it's a nice, bright, sunny, vibrant blue sky. All right, while I continue to let my sky dry, I'm gonna work on what I'm calling the ocean or water in here. And the best way we're gonna communicate that is by incorporating the color blue um, in the ocean. We are gonna use all four of the blue colors I have in my palette. So I have an ultramarine, a phthalo blue, a cobalt blue, but this does have a little Payne's gray in there. So it's a little bit darker and desaturated and a cobalt teal. Did I call this cobalt blue? This is a cerulean. So ultramarine, phthalo blue, cerulean, and cobalt teal. All right, so, and one, two, three, four, and then I have a little, I'll probably do that in cobalt teal as well. So I'm gonna start, I think, with cobalt teal closest to the shore. And I'm just, again, gonna paint this in in a relatively flat wash straight across and I'm going to let it have a little bit of a gradient as it goes out to this wider area. So not quite a flat wash. It's a little darker towards the edge. All 
right, and then I'm going to do cobalt next to it and then phthalo. So I'm gonna do phthalo now. While that dries, I'll do this one. Same thing, I'm gonna start here. I really took a nice saturated bit of phthalo blue. Rinse my brush off a little bit. And I didn't say before, but I did switch down to my size eight. Just trying to get those mooks and crannies in here. All right. And once I'm done with this section, I just wanna make sure it's got a nice even dampness all the way throughout so it doesn't do any funky drying things. So that's why I'm going kind of back up to the top. All right, and this one is gonna be ultramarine. This is going to be cerulean. And this little triangle down here, I'll go back to cobalt teal. So I'll do that one right now. So hopefully when this is done, this feels a little ocean-esque or at least water. I think the having the lighthouse in it with the blue colors will give it that kind of feel to it. All right, so letting them dry. We're almost there for this one. We'll pull out our cerulean, that's this blue. It's kind of a grayer slightly muted blue. Let's see if I can get in here. Get really close, but not. This cerulean color is very granulating. which can be fun. And putting this kind of duller, deeper shade next to this teal makes it just pop even more. And then ultramarine, this is our super red undertone, warm blue among all of these very cool blues. And this ultramarine is also a very granulating color. And that just means it separates a little bit as it dries and it creates some texture. If you don't like that look, then I wouldn't go with a ultramarine. All right, we're gonna let that all dry and see if anything needs like another coat. I'm actually gonna lift some of this so it's a little lighter at the bottom like the others. So it doesn't feel too heavy. There we go. And then, oh, sorry for my glass jar today. Let's see if I can lift some of this out without completely ruining it. Wasn't quite dry yet, so I'm just lifting in this direction, but it was in the damp stage where you're really not supposed to touch it again. I'm gonna get a hard edge there because of that. All right, well, I can always come back and put another layer on that uh, cerulean if I need to, but I think it actually looks pretty good. All right, so let's focus on our hills. I want these to be really bright and vibrant. This is gonna be red up here. These are gonna be yellows, greens, and maybe oranges, along with some really um, vibrant jewel-toned trees. 
All right, I'm gonna start with this hill up front here and I'm gonna use my Diorolite Yellow, which is very, a very, very warm yellow. And I am going to make sure your blues are dry because once yellow mixes with blues, you're gonna get green. And if that's the look you're going for, great. I'm switching to my larger brush kind of on the fly here, knowing that this face is quite large. little white line in here, we get really close. All right, and now I'm gonna kinda come all the way down, going in the shape of the hill. Add a little water, a little more flow, and slightly lighter at the bottom. Lift a little color out of here. All right, oh, that's drying so quickly. All right, so now I'm going to go into, what color am I gonna do around? I think these are all gonna be green. Or, hmm. Let's bring in the cadmium red. So I have some cadmium red. And I think I'm gonna actually mix my cadmium red with a little diorolite yellow and make a very orangey red. Maybe even more orangey than red, but I'm gonna do Ugh, I'm just gonna go for it. go. I kind of like that. I'm wondering if I should put green in between the yellow and the red. Or, hmm, make a different color yellow. Make them all warm colors. Maybe I'll do that. So this one I'm going to make a little bit lighter. Cadmiums are very, uh, cadmium colors are very opaque. So they have really good coverage. I'm gonna try to paint around my trees the best I can. And I'm gonna make them a really bright, vibrant, kind of darker color. Very, very blue greens. So hopefully any little errors on my edges will be forgiven when I paint them in later. one little blip right there, but. All right, so this guy in here, I'm thinking green, but like a very yellowy green, not a full sap green. So if I took green, my sap green, mix it with yellow, So this is a very warm green, very yellowy green. I 
And this color palette is wild because there's so many complementary colors in it. And the tones that I'm picking are just very dissonant. So they actually create like, like they're uncomfortable, like uncomfortableness between them, if that makes sense. Dissonance, almost like a ringing. So this is green, but it's next to the yellow and the red. It's almost coming out like brownish, which I'm kind of okay with. If I want to go back and put like a green hue on it later, I can do that. But I think I'm actually going to do something a little darker, a little more green, less yellow here in this one more olive color. I'm thinking, do I make this one, oops, red as well? Well, now do I have to go with green? Because I put this big clump of green on there. Just gonna make it as light as possible. So whatever I decide to put on here. All right, there we go. So we just have to do this one last hill back here and our trees. This stuff is almost like completely dry. So I'm actually gonna do some of these trees up here. I'm gonna use cerulean or not cerulean, I'm gonna use phthalo blue and sap green to get this really jewel-toned green color. This and I think purple I'm gonna use on these plants. All right, the edges of this are just a tiny bit damp and I'm not gonna get clean edges. So I'm gonna bust out my handy dandy heat gun um, and dry this before I continue on. So if you need to take a break, go ahead and do that now or pull out a heat gun yourself and give your piece a dry. All right, there we go, all nice and dry. So I'm gonna do this other large tree the same color I'm gonna do the short one in purple don't need any puddling on here go slow take your time it's often a rush when you start painting I'm gonna put a second layer on this now that it's dry I often find myself like wanting to paint so badly that I'm like rushing through everything and then I'm frustrated at the end because it doesn't come out the way I want it to. So I encourage you to take your time. I'm gonna use some ultramarine. I'm gonna put one layer on these folks over here and then I know I'm gonna do another layer after this. I love this. Um, the blue next to the orange. They are complementary colors, so there's always a lot of kind of friction between them. They make each other both much more vibrant than if you were to look at just this orange color, just this blue color on its own. You put them next to each other and it kind of brings out the best in both of them, which is why they're called complementary colors. All right, so I'm gonna pull in a little Dyrolide purple not diarolite purple, diaxazine purple. I knew it began with a D. All right, we're gonna put some diaxazine purple down here on this little guy. Yep. And there's one little Nugget of a bush right here. All 
All right, so that's done. I still have to do this hill back here, but I wanna let these dry. I'm gonna give my um, lighthouse a little bit of a treatment. So I'm gonna have light coming this way, even though we have a pretty flat sky here and no major directional light. If it's coming this way, I'll be able to add shadows to these trees here, a little shadow here, and then also I can play with shadow on the roof. So if I were a roof standing right next to a lighthouse, I would be darkest right here. Rinse off my brush and I'm gonna get lighter as we go across. And then we're gonna take the tiniest bit of Payne's Gray. So the white of the lighthouse and the house itself, I do wanna play up. I want them to come across as white, but this part of the house is in shadow over here underneath. The lighthouse, so it is gonna to have to be pretty gray. Don't worry, we're gonna put the windows in in a little bit. That will darken things up and provide a little contrast. And then we're gonna put gray on this half. Over here. Blend it out a little bit with just water. And then when we put our details on, it's gonna pop even more. All right, so let's do our roof too. We're gonna make that red as well. But this is gonna be darker on this side because it's there's no shadow coming onto it from the lighthouse and the sun is coming from this direction. And this whole little lip is kind of facing away from the sun, so it's all gonna be a little darker. And if you feel the need to add even like a darker shadow on this side, you could add a little ultramarine or a little dioxazine purple, a little Payne's gray. To make the shadows even a little darker. There you go. All right, so letting that dry we're going to because we're going to put in our windows but we need to put in this last hill here and i'm still trying to decide i have this green blob should i make it green the answer i think is yes so i'm going to mix up some green it's not going to be just like any other green that's already out there Mostly sap green with a little phthalo. It's gonna be like this cool color green. We're gonna hope that this works or that this looks right in here. I'm gonna go right up against the lighthouse at first because that part is the most surprise, uh, precise, surprise, the most su precise that we have to be is right along that edge.
And then you also want to be precise around these bushes as best you can. I am going to go in with a little more ultramarine, I think, to darken them on the one side into the bushes is what I speak of. Oh, we gotta do the other side. Can't just do the one side. I'm just making sure that is dry so I don't bump up against it and get a big surprise where my whole lighthouse turns green because it's still wet. I think this was the right choice. It's cooler in color. It seems a little further back. The green next to the red roof seems to resonate well and make everything pop. The only one I don't love is this color down here. And you know what? I'm gonna try to put a slightly, it's gonna end up being darker, but it's gonna be a little cooler. And I might end up hating it even more, but it just seems so kind of out of place, less vibrant than everything else. But I don't know that adding more green is gonna help. We're just gonna make it darker. Probably just gonna make it darker and more out of place, more of an eyesore, but that's okay. We do our best. And it still has some drying to do, so it's gonna lighten as it's drying. So no big deal. All right, let's put in our final details in our lighthouse. We're gonna use Payne's Gray for this for the windows and the door. So the windows are just gonna go underneath. Here, just under the roof. One there, one here. I hope my head isn't in the way. I don't think it is. A big, tall door right there. We'll even give the lighthouse a door. and a window or two. There we go. We're gonna put the railing on. If you need a thinner brush, feel free to change to a thinner brush. I'm gonna put that railing on. We're gonna actually fill this in. There we go. So it looks like there's a little platform to stand on in there. And we're gonna give it some railings, some bars to go around. And then we're gonna also put in some details for the trees, some little stumps. Oh, I said I was gonna put on another layer of the ultramarine, so I might as well. Darker ultramarine, give that a little highlight on the one side. There we go, makes everything pop. And we can even do that with the green as well. There we go, boom, ba boom, ba boom. You could do it with the purple, but I'm not, that's overkill for me. And then for shadows, we're gonna put on, I'm just using a darker red in an approximate shape. Right now I'm using a darker red. I'm gonna use a darker, darker green over here. And same thing, this, I'll do a darker green here with our lighthouse itself. There would be a shadow. 
probably right here in front. Making the ground a little bit darker in this section than anywhere else. And I think we're done. Although you could go in and add some details down here in the foreground, which I've done in a lot of my paintings, but I'm gonna call this one done. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. I don't know if I love the color of the sky. I feel like it's a little too dull, but maybe not. Maybe it works with these really bright colors, um, but it seems a little flat to me. Maybe putting in the moon or the sun up there um, would have helped but maybe this is just right or just the way it's supposed to be. So thank you so much for painting with me. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow along for these fun, whimsical, folk art, naive, paint inspired paintings. Um, don't forget to check out the description for links to my social media, my studio crew classroom, as well as all supplies and materials we use in the videos. And last but not least, Go paint and have a great day, rest of your day. Thanks so much, everybody. And I'll see y'all again soon.